Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to all the participants and our speakers. Uh, this is Bhaktavar Mahmood and I'm going to moderate today's session, which is uh, innovation in micro gas turbine and cutting edge propulsion technologies in Pakistan. Uh, this is a joint venture of Pakistan Aerospace Council and uh, Asian Air Institute of uh, Industrial Air. Uh, Pakistan Aerospace Council, it is a cluster organization for the enterprise activities in the aerospace, defense, and high-tech electronic market. Uh, it was formed for global promotion of uh, high value addition and high technology manufacturers of Pakistan while meeting the national trends for technology acquisition as well as export-led sustainable growth of Pakistan aerospace industries. PAC, Pakistan Aerospace Council activities, uh, they're focused around the following key objectives that includes improving the image and profile of Pakistan's high-tech sector, influencing policy debates and procedures of most importance to the industries, uh, supporting Pakistan's high value manufacturing and supply chains, encouraging uh, investments in technology and innovation, supporting business development and uh, opportunities in the global market, increasing members value and sustainable growth of private high sector in Pakistan, high tech sector in Pakistan. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this webinar is going to be conducted um, with the formal proceedings of uh, introduction of our guest speakers. We'll have a brief introduction and then we'll move on to the question and answer session with our uh, panelists and our speaker for today. Uh, you, if you have any sort of questions, you will be asked to please uh, raise them uh, at the end of the uh, webinar or you can also send your questions in our chat and our panelists will try to uh, accept your questions I hope that most of them are, are, are answered as well. So um, I would like to introduce our speaker for today. Uh, our speaker is from Solinox, uh, and it is an R&D company and having core expertise in the mechanical engineering avionics, aerospace, uh, naval architect, mechatronics, and armament and explosives. We are the OEM for following product ranges that includes the high-speed launching system, conventional and unconventional airframes, micro gas turbines, IR flares for target practice, IR uh, ignition system, parachute recovery system, mini submarine and unmanned ground vehicles. Our speaker for today's session is engineer captain retired Sajid Ali Khan Terin, PNG, BNG, Amrena UK, member ASME, member ASTM, member IEP and also is a retired Pakistan Navy captain who has served on board submarines for over 30 years. He's also a graduate in the mechanical engineering and MSc in maritime studies. He has qualification in the contract management, project management and strategic management. He possesses a vast experience of the submarine design and construction and he has established Solinox Private Limited that is an emerging R&D setup in the aerospace and high-tech industry. Solinox, uh, it produces micro gas turbines for the propulsions and electrical power. Uh, aerial applicator of pesticide on the crops is another area of expertise. And it is a business model for cheap application has been developed for the third world countries. And he's the leading R&D uh, uh, in the teams of uh, Solinox. So we have with us uh, our very own as uh, the CEO of PAC and AIA. Uh, our panelist for today's session, uh, Dr. Arshad Ali. Dr. Arshad is a recipient of Sitara MKRs and Pride of Performance from the Government of Pakistan. He has completed his PhD from the United States of America and has served as the Executive Director, Higher Education Commission, HEC, Vice Chancellor, National Textile University, Faisalabad, Dean, Nas Islamabad, and Pakistan Air Force. So, uh, Sajid Sahib, first of all, welcome, and uh, I hope that we have a great session today. I would request you to please unmute your mic so that we start with the question and answer session. Thank you very Asasa, much for your... You are and have pursued naval career, but how did you get the idea of the startup in this cutting edge technologies and that too in the aerospace? Uh, would you like to share with the participants the, of this webinar that what is Solinox and how did you manage to do what your company is doing at the moment? Right. Uh, 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 in fact, you have got two parts of your question. Maybe if, uh, I'll par uh, answer your first part in the later, but uh, I'll uh, we'll go uh, how to describe you about what Solinox is. So if you allow me just if you uh, have some few uh, understanding. Okay. 
uh, can you see the presentation slides? Not yet. Mm, Not yet, yes. Share screen, is that Okay. Is it okay now? Yes, it is available now. Yes, okay. we have started seeing it now. Just to introduce you uh, what Solinox is. Uh, Can you please take it to full screen? Sir. It's okay now. Yeah, thank you. Let us see. So uh, basically, uh, Solinox was established in March 2017 uh, in the private sector for research in cutting edge technologies. Since inception, Solinox has been engaged in uh, various research projects and overseas studies. Mainly our research areas are aerospace and marine man unmanned systems, uh, materials, propulsion systems, electrical power generation, and health monitoring uh, support systems. At the moment, uh, Solidnox owns five patents, and uh, we are at the moment uh, in the process of uh, getting them registered internationally. Uh, Solidnox, basically, just to, before it start, now coming to your question, uh, that uh, we started this process of establishing this company. Before that, we we were uh, stepping into a cutting edge technologies, so we had to design, uh, analyze what all major companies in the related field have progressed from right from the scratch. To do this, we studied them, uh, those companies, we analyzed them, and uh, we collected a lot of uh, knowledge source of research materials, patents, uh, online libraries, and we had to take membership of professional organizations like uh, I was uh, in, uh, informed in the start of the presentation, a uh, member of American Society of Mechanical Engineers and American Society of Testing Materials and the Royal Institute of Naval Architects UK. And uh, uh, it, uh, the Solinox is member of uh, com three committees for formulation of standards at ASTM. And uh, moreover, uh, we have, uh, just to strengthen our company, we have concluded some uh, R&D collaboration agreement with university, academia, and uh, other companies uh, across the uh, three continents. We have uh, uh, contracted uh, technology partnership, mainly strategic one, uh, based on sharing of uh, our research together. And now we are able to, uh, uh, now we are registered as a supplier in some of the renowned aerospace directories also so that we have access, direct access to the companies globally. Moreover, we have uh, networked into industry also so that uh, for manufacturing uh, process because the type of industry we are working at the moment is uh, uh, needs a lot of precision and uh, very dedicated design processes. So we are actually, we have done this networking with the companies. Uh, then uh, some of the uh, technical specification in the process we have done that majorly, uh, major our products are smart products. We have uh, uh, focused our attention towards the propulsion systems, automatic, uh, automation and control systems and system integration. We have uh, some process specializations uh, because uh, we involve precision manufacturing, as I told. We, we develop our expertise in aerodynamics, hydrodynamics, signal processing, platform design, integration, modeling, simulation, prototyping, and in the end, but major part is in the safety of all these systems. Now, and next, uh, you'll see uh, that uh, this is the resource uh, human resource experts we have. With us, uh, we have aerospace experts, combustion experts, avionics experts, mechatronics, automation. Uh, in the end, we have the other, those who are the trade experts uh, doing the diplomas. Now, uh, coming to your second part, how I started this uh, aeronaut, uh, this process of aerospace, despite being in the in the Navy and doing uh, serving in the, uh, in the submarines. In fact, yes. uh, just for your information that I started uh, my career as aeronautical engineer, but somehow a uh, turn of the events took me to the Navy and eventually uh, ended up uh, getting, getting commission in uh, Pakistan Navy and then joining submarine service. The submarine service itself is a cutting edge technology. So in a way, in a way I'm working at the moment two extreme technologies in aerospace or submarines. 
rest in between is a, a mediocre technologies uh, in that sense. And how uh, this, your question is how I came into developing these gas turbine and everything because uh, in fact, the, our study mainly, you know, just not, did not start all of a sudden. We, we have a team, those were working for quite some time, but they're working in own capacities in uh, gas turbine technology or aerospace technologies. But our main effort was to, to pick them on one platform under Solionox. But now for the, for specifically for the turbines, uh, you know, there is this last uh, complete uh, process of uh, turbine started, uh, micro gas turbine started just last six years ago, six or five, six years ago. Before that, uh, in the next slide, I'll show you the historical perspective I'll share with you, uh, how it evolved micro gas turbine. But mainly my focus remained was uh, what is happening globally on this projects. At the moment, you must, for maybe information or maybe having some knowledge about this, United Nations Framework of uh, Climate Change is a, a framework for uh, this climate change. They have set standards of uh, zero emissions uh, uh, for uh, all such systems. So this was one motivation. And the other one, the European Union uh, effort on uh, this development of the gas turbine by 2050, entire European Union is targeting to uh, reach this uh, target of uh, zero emission in uh, by 2050. And for to this end, the European Union has already invested uh, 1.6 million euros for studies and research. And for this process, they involve at least 12, 12 com expert companies to develop micro gas turbine for 10 kilowatt electrical, which they have done in 2014 and 16. And the, in 2018, European again uh, uh, tasked uh, 36 companies in entire Europe working on different uh, specialist technologies, starting from the micro, micro gas turbine materials, uh, various bearings, bearings uh, their uh, generator systems, and many other technologies which are required. You'll see in the next slide also that how these technologies are being uh, matured over the period and how many companies in Europe alone has uh, put in their effort to mature these technologies. Mm -hmm. And there was last assessment by European Union in which almost, uh, as it said, 36 uh, companies under the uh, leadership of uh, European Turbine Network, they actually conducted a complete assessment of entire European Union to develop these micro gas turbine in future. And how to conduct, uh, how to bring these micro gas turbine into mainstream of uh, renewable energy. Now, uh, in micro gas turbines, uh, please, uh, you can be asked. Uh, yeah. You can go so, for sir, uh, my next question will be more specifically about uh, what micro gas turbines are. Can you please explain it for the interest of the audience uh, who are actually laymen and for someone who has a bit of knowledge about the systems? And can you also please throw some light on uh, the manufacturing process as well? Okay. Just for the uh, start, I'm sure uh, all experience. Uh, from the aerospace are sitting here and somehow, as you said, maybe some uh, those were not uh, related to this technology or this engineering background. Basically, uh, gas turbine is a heat engine with a continuous flow in comparison to uh, reciprocating engines. Uh, they use pulsating flows. Uh, this type of turbines, uh, this <coughs> engines uh, have a compressor, a turbine and uh, a combustion chamber where this heat can be uh, applied in different modes uh, through maybe fuel injection and you'll see uh, through new methods are coming for heat, adding heat to the combustion chamber. In this type of engine, and then they, they, they are mounted on the same shaft. Uh, micro gas turbines generally are uh, mounted on the same shaft. And that is why they are popular in this uh, uh, world of the part of the world of aerospace. Uh, at the moment, there is no standard definition of uh, micro gas turbine in fact. Initially, it was considered under one megawatt will be considered as a uh, micro gas turbine, but uh, subsequently, uh, the, this definition uh, kept on uh, worked out by many engineering uh, associations and countries. So, so at the moment, un uh, under 400 kilowatt uh, uh, turbine is, is graded as a micro, uh, micro gas turbine. And this micro gas turbines, uh, in, I can, you can see in the, in the uh, cycle, uh, process cycle, this is Brayton cycle. It follows a Brayton cycle. 
Uh, in this uh, process, the compressor raises the uh, air pressure and uh, from process one and two, maybe if it is visible to you, uh, then it is directed to combustion chamber where uh, heat is added via com uh, fuel combustion through heat exchanger or concentrated solar power, uh, heat, can, heat is added. And then again in uh, turbine, uh, at three to four process, you can see the turbine expansion in turbine takes place to produce power. And this turbine drives compressor and generator or uh, the efficiency of these turbines can be added by a recuperator uh, like this uh, on the return cycle to increase the uh, temperature in the combustion chamber so that the uh, economy of fuel can be, uh, can be done. Then some of the historic perspective related to microgas turbine. As I said during my presentation, the development started in 1980s. It is not a new uh, subject basically. But main, uh, the, driver, uh, the, the drive for this development was automotive industry, because at that time, automotive industry was looking for an alternate for uh, reciprocating engines. And mainly because of the flu, uh, fuel flexibility, reliability, and low emissions in the microgas turbine. However, at that time, maybe uh, for some reason, this did not get attraction at that time. But again, in 1990s, use of high-speed generators evolved and uh, the interest also developed in hybrid uh, vehicles, and it was considered suitable for, uh, for these uh, hybrid vehicles. And subsequently, the uh, concept was again picked up by decentralized power uh, in 2014, when European Union and after UFCCC uh, declared some uh, standards uh, for uh, low emission uh, in atmosphere. The, the, the important part of this microgas turbines are they have low maintenance and compensate for high capital cost. Currently, interest is rising due to low NOx uh, in this gas turbine, and its uh, interest is developing now. Now, coming to microgas turbine design and build. Uh, in this slide, you will see the microgas turbine, the design process the most critical thing about gas turbine and the process of R&D being expensive in micro gas turbine or turbine technology is this is all iterative process. Every process right from the uh, design board till the final delivery, it, unders it undergoes uh, iterative process. That is why this uh, causes uh, some uh, expensive uh, uh, in uh, involved of uh, high expenses. So uh, the First design process start from the Brayton cycle and from in this process, various uh, element of gas turbine design are finalized, generally mass flow, uh, the temperature ranges at different uh, stations in the gas turbine. And at the same time, the selection of material is also done. Again, mind you, just, I, just for repetition, this is an iterator process and continuously back and forth moment between the designer, the end user continuously goes on till the time of suitable uh, compromises adjusted. And uh, then uh, you'll see uh, the, uh, the, uh, the old macro gas turbine has some auxiliary systems. Uh, this auxiliary system is again, uh, again, uh, it's a process. It undergoes an iterative process during the design. And then engine control units, uh, which control the, uh, the complete process, because uh, now these gas turbines cannot be controlled manually, for sure. So to make them, uh, make them smart and uh, efficient, these engine control units are becoming more smarter now. And then, uh, uh, then comes the, uh, the power generator unit, generation unit, the generators. They are, can, can anybody guess what is the RPM of micro gas turbine? It is, uh, it is uh, at times um, cause jaw dropping gestures because these turbines run at RPM from 144,000 to 400,000 RPMs. And temperatures are in the range of uh, 350 to 850 degrees centigrade. So it's a, it's a huge uh, process of uh, engine, engine machine, which is involved uh, in this uh, complete system. And I was telling about the generators. Now with the evolution of generation technology, the generators, uh, becoming running with high speeds of 400,000 or 140,000 RPMs, this has become very much min miniaturized. So entire micro gas turbine becomes a very miniaturized uh, in dimension or maybe less than a, a cubic meter. Uh, it is can develop a huge power, about 50 kilowatt power for a micro gas turbine. In this design process, the most critical of the element is the balancing of the uh, 
shaft and the uh, pool assembly. Because uh, the amount of RPM that is involved uh, cannot afford this balancing. So uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, Solinox has developed this capability to do all this process. And then uh, the more another element of this micro gas turbine success and the possibility of uh, having such a high rotation is their bearings. And this, the evolution in these bearings started from general bearing to now uh, hybrid bearings to air bearings and magnetic bearings. And uh, uh, we have these uh, technologies, access to these technologies now. Okay, now let's move to uh, some of the uh, parts which we manufacture uh, in our facility. These are two versions, uh, SLS 120 NP and SLS 180 NP. They are uh, 120 uh, Newton and 180 Newton respectively. And uh, our research is continuing and uh, we have plans to further improve these systems to uh, for relatively higher powers. Can I have a quick instruction here? Hello. Yeah. Uh, okay. The part you just show, it's uh, designed by you and manufactured in Pakistan. Yep. Um, yep. So I was seeing in your last slide, you said the bearing and the generation, it's uh, running about thousands. So how you actually um, kind of manage it? Because I didn't see it. You are not using any kind of actuators. You are not using any kind of... Uh, uh, like a balance its devices. So uh, how, how could you be so sure that these bearings and the generations that running at that high RPM will not like destroy each other? You'll see uh, a, our video, you'll see our video running and uh, okay. these technologies are already matured enough. Uh, and we also, uh, we are a running engine. So yeah, we have yeah. our team is, uh, mashallah has done enough good job on this. They can control this. Okay, so they have, uh, they have, they have control this. Okay, so you, you are not using any kind of actuators in this process? No, nope. correct? No. Nope. Okay. okay, please come. It is a thermal cycle. It is a thermal cycle. Okay. okay. I also request the, the participants that if we can uh, ask the questions towards the end of the presentation so that all the questions get answered one by one as well. Sorry for my interruption. I thought maybe you were asking, so uh, I didn't know. I no, no, you down. can leave the question in the chat, folks, and okay. then uh, Dr. Arshad will be the panelist for the question and answer session. So okay. we'll uh, try to answer all the questions. Okay, thanks. Yep. So this is one of the pictures of, uh, running, and this is uh, one of the pictures uh, conducted, uh, taken during a test conducted, and uh, it is running engine. You can maybe see the RPMs and the temperature uh, in the uh, digital display of this picture. And this is just the startup. It's not full power. Okay, may I move now, next. Now coming to technical specifications. We have uh, uh, developed 120 Newton and uh, 180 Newton. And uh, according to our studies, we are planning to go to 800 Newton for, uh, in recent future, in near, near future. And where we can have electrical output from three to 500 kilowatt electrical and thermal output for three to uh, 1500 kilowatt thermal and exhaust gas temperature between uh, up to 850 degrees centigrade. We have uh, fuel flexibility of uh, using natural gas, sour gas, gasoline, kerosene, diesel fuel, biofuels, etc. And we have uh, targeting electrical efficiency from 23 to 40%, and where is total efficiency in CSP mode from 80 to 90%. Okay. Uh, reliability in life. These turbines uh, have been designed to uh, work with 42,000 to 80,000 hours. With, with overhaul and uh, emission targeting below three ppm for NOx on fossil fuels comparative, comparatively. This will be our range. And the noise level we are maintaining 50 dBA. These turbines are uh, modular and uh, the infrastructure is also uh, very modular, easily workable for maintenance. Uh, compact system, which is 0 0.045 to 0 0.065 cubic meter kilowatt per uh, kilowatt E. These turbines are low maintenance. Typical single radial stage and single uh, rotating path 
uh, no uh, moving parts. And now you'll see in a, a, a later part of the technologies where a type of bearings are used, there is no lubrication also. Uh, again, reliability, because there's very less number of parts involved into this gas turbine. So it is very uh, reliable and robust. Compactness is because of the high energy density, use of high speed generators and turbine itself is a very small uh, system, very compact to develop modular power up to range, up to the range of 50 kilowatt. So you can stack up various modules to develop powers uh, in the multiples of uh, 50 kilowatt. These uh, have fuel flexibility and diverse fuels can be used from jet fuel, diesel and biofuel, as I said. This is the, the most uh, interesting part in European Union at the moment is trying to use biofuels. Uh, but at the same time, their consumption, their, uh, the, because of the NOx uh, uh, emissions are very low. So even on diesel also, they are considered very low. The other application, uh, maybe for the audience, it is uh, CSP is a concentrated solar power application. In this application, the uh, dish is used to direct the uh, sun energy on combustion chamber to give heat to the turbine. These are low emission turbines, low NOx uh, as compared to reciprocating engines. So that is one of the reasons why European Union and world is moving towards microgas turbine even in renewable energy uh, solutions. They are low noise, the combustion noise is very low uh, as compared to reciprocating engines. This is a very uh, high frequency noise and this can be attenuated relatively easily. And they have got low vibrations compared to reciprocating engines. And CSP mode can be used for high heat and low electrical power. It depends because uh, in this mode, you can choose between the two. You want heat load more or you want electrical load, you can adjust accordingly and we can uh, meet the requirement of the end user. And there's another, uh, it is integration with fuel cell. And uh, in integration with fuel cell, this, uh, the byproduct, the heat is used to uh, uh, heat the, uh, the solid fuel of uh, used in the uh, fuel cell. The applications are uh, combined heat and power and combined heat and, cool, uh, and uh, cooling, cooling and heat power for domestic and industrial uses and the automotive range extenders. Now, uh, because uh, in hybrid vehicles, uh, the batteries were not considered enough for a long endurance. So these uh, hybrid, uh, in hybrid vehicles, the micro gas turbines are being, being used to enhance the uh, range of uh, the uh, hybrid vehicles. And in future, uh, these are uh, going to be used in, uh, in Europe in future train and uh, rail transport. And uh, in oil and gas sector, preventing a flare, flare basically is a normally, uh, they are uh, continuously, they are uh, venting their gas into atmosphere. So uh, uh, European Union has, has banned this use uh, of this venting this uh, flare uh, into atmosphere. So micro gas turbine are being used to, uh, to produce uh, heat and uh, electricity using that gas also. So this uh, has another application. Concentrated solar power, as I said, uh, using the solar power uh, concentrated heat on a combustion chamber to uh, use in, with the uh, in combination of solar uh, solar energy and gas turbine. And more with, uh, uh, one of the popular uses is small UAVs and uh, APUs in another uh, area where these micro gas turbine can be used. And again, uh, due to their minimum size, these are being adopted as a backup power energy instead of using batteries with the renewable energy plants. So please. So you've spoken about uh, the micro gas turbines. So what other products your company is actually working that have the export level potential? Uh, my new, uh, next few slides would uh, indicate you some pictorial uh, views uh, so that you can have uh, an idea what we are actually developing beside this range. High-speed target drone launching system. Uh, this is the uh, system which has been developed uh, in Pakistan and designed and developed in Pakistan. And you, the picture you are seeing at the moment is the, uh, uh, is the transport mode. It is uh, in the folded state where it can be transported. In the next, you will see the deployed state. Uh, the, the system is in deployed uh, state. 
it, the system has got uh, the capability to launch masses up to 150 kg and, and with speed of 55 meter per second. The weight of the launcher is 5,500 kg, easily deployable with 16 meter length. And it has a uh, transportable length is six meter, can be easily transported in a 20 feet container. This is being operated with high pressure air, uh, 150 bar, can be deployed um, at sea and land. And this system can launch uh, 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 systems, uh, deploy UAVs with the force up to 15 Gs controllable uh, using our system. Uh, this is some of the pictures of uh, uh, 200 kg uh, UAV being launched. It is a dummy. It's a, uh, this is uh, at the moment the dummy is without any propulsion system. It is a, uh, just metal dummy. This is some of the picture of again a dummy being launched without a power, uh, with a power, just to show uh, how much energy the system has got. We are, uh, we are now in uh, uh, high speed target drone systems uh, for training of pilot and for, uh, for various uh, commercial uses. Uh, uh, and uh, it's a high powered system, uh, can uh, go up to 0.4 Mach. And um, the system has been designed for uh, being used for our launcher. And this is one of the UAV. Uh, for uh, for smaller low speed system for IR tracking uh, system. This is a uh, this is unconventional uh, wings. Uh, this has been developed by us. This is for small uh, we're getting small payload capacities for uh, uh, aerial videos or pictures on a disaster area. This is a small uh, unmanned underwater vehicle uh, uh, used for uh, survey of the seabed uh, during disaster to submarine or a ship uh, or, or a survey of uh, oil rigs. Uh, this is fitted with a camera in the nose to, uh, to carry out survey and can be controlled with wire or wireless and the depth can be, uh, can be adjusted. Uh, this is another unmanned ground vehicles. Uh, this is a robot uh, manufactured at our facility. Uh, this is autonomous. It can. It also has camera for surveying and uh, other activities. Or it can uh, manually handle, uh, pick up things during a disaster uh, survey of a damage area during fire or flooding. This autonomous robot can uh, give you feedback to the end user to the system. Uh, high strength materials, these are the uh, lightweight high strength materials uh, being developed. Uh, uh, research was done and we have developed. And now uh, you can see Mark uh, to protect the high energy bullets. Uh, we, are we have developed locally. Uh, you can see how uh, it has, bullet has been prevented. This is the front end. We are into some uh, precision manufacturing. We develop connectors. Uh, you can imagine the accuracy is required for these type of connectors. There are things. Okay. Uh, All right. Maybe so, just. Sir, what sure. is? Yeah. So, okay, please. I, I would like to ask basically that what is the potential market you see for all your products and what are the export capabilities? Uh, Frankly, we are uh, at the moment uh, targeting uh, Central and Eastern Europe, Canada, South Asian, ASEAN, Gulf, Central Asian countries, and Afri some of the African countries has shown interest into us, and and the uh, Pakistan, of course. Um, these countries have shown interest, and uh, for this, uh, actually, we have participated in few ex uh, exhibitions also. And so we have. We have received a, a quite a good encouraging uh, response from these countries. Yes. And the export capabilities uh, we have, uh, like all our products, because uh, micro gas turbine, uh, high speed launching systems, automatic disarming system. This is, I've not displayed here. 
we maybe show you a video uh, for the system. Uh, this system uh, can uh, disarm uh, ammunition, uh, which is expired, can be uh, dismantled automatically. Uh, our highest end material have been uh, uh, very, uh, results were very encouraging with the, some of the companies have shown interest for bulletproof jackets and, and materials and high performance actuators uh, for pneumatic, with pneumatic systems. And automobile industry, we have our, uh, some of the offshoot uh, technologies coming out of these products uh, applicable in automotive industry. All right. Okay. So, uh, Sansab, what is the future outlook of the SolidNox and what is your advice for venturing into new technologies in Pakistan? Frankly, uh, in the future outlook, uh, we see uh, 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 raising the, the capacity of uh, these micro gas turbines and uh, in the CSP mode, because this is going to be the future of uh, the world, maybe. Uh, maybe in Pakistan, it may take some time to come to this level, but uh, Europe and Americas, they are focusing, focusing it. Even Japan is focusing on these technologies. So we are targeting these, uh, these countries for uh, and that is why we have uh, uh, we have developed our trajectory towards these uh, uh, technologies. And then uh, we have uh, high-speed launching systems, uh, and uh, from European and US market, and unmanned systems from ground, air, and underwater and water systems. And we have UAVs for agriculture uh, uh, used with IoT. And we have uh, targeting hybrid power for high performance marine platforms, innovative transportation system, inside building positioning system, and protection against EMC, EMI, fire and water. These are few areas because the offshoot technologies of our research are done so far. Okay. All right. So as I said, uh, moving towards the end of my question uh, from you regarding the presentation, is that how the government of Pakistan can help Solinox and what examples uh, exist in other countries for supporting such technologies? Okay. Uh, in fact, in, in Solinox research uh, is ready to lead Pakistan towards getting a technology in power in energy domain. Entire effort is exactly aligned with government vision. So we expect once we are already aligned and maybe we are talking about for Pakistani uh, uh, administration, uh, develop this understanding of uh, low emission or low NOx and uh, other uh, areas, they may like to come up maybe the later stage, but uh, at the moment we at Solanox have developed future technology in this time period. So what we are expecting from government or public sector organization, if they think they want to avail uh, our expertise in, uh, in these technologies, we are ready to uh, uh, give our expertise uh, gain so far. And uh, technologies can be ecosystem. We can help uh, the government organizations to develop this ecosystem in Pakistan. And, and important thing is uh, with this ecosystem should uh, be beneficial, beneficial for both parties, like uh, we are developed, we are a private uh, ent entity. We are, we have used all our resources. As I mentioned you in the start of the process that even European Union has invested 1.6 million euros only for the study to develop gas turbine. Whereas Solinox uh, is doing, using its own resources to uh, carry out this research. And today we have reached to this level. So uh, we would like uh, that we will be ready to do business, of course, uh, for a profitable business, of course. Uh, I will not shy in saying that because uh, we have done so much up till now. So uh, we, will, we are ready to even extend our uh, services to academia for training, for education to university students and tradesmen. And uh, frankly, there is a huge demand of made in Pakistan cutting edge technologies in Pakistan. You see, all stakeholders now have to play their parts to establish this ecosystem. Alone, maybe uh, I may sustain in Pakistan for quite some time with our own resources, but you can see the, uh, the level of technology we are talking about is for, uh, has developed interest for so much of audience in Pakistan at the moment and internationally. So uh, we would expect this now, all stakeholders have to come in now to take this, I don't know how, but uh, since 
to make this our business uh, sustainable uh, we uh, we would expect uh, government to come in uh, at a government level they come up with some uh, ideas or maybe we are ready to give our ideas to the government so uh, most important thing out of, out of all these things is the ecosystem when i say ecosystem when i what i mean is you uh, because research cannot take place without a formal education for sure it is not possible that anybody come in and start working on gas turbine or similar technology so you must have a good formal education the good part in pakistan is that we have abundance of innovation innovative formal education we have got so much phds in related technologies working in pakistan and outside pakistan and related to stuff in pakistan also the the only issue which at the moment pakistan has suffered now and alhamdulillah what solidox has Uh, make a difference is that we have access to innovative hand on experience those who are actually can work on gas turbine those who know the philosophy of manufacturing of making a gas turbine and the precision requ- requirement of a precision in this type of technology then comes the tested knowledge this is another uh, area of knowledge which normally the west is very much relying on because in pakistan if you manage to get uh, hand on experience but we lack is tacit knowledge we do uh, we don't have any system mechanism in pakistan at the moment to harness tacit knowledge so if you have formal education alone will not do, uh, solve your purpose even if you have hands on experience you will manage some but you will not you will do, uh, explore complete area but the tacit knowledge is the area which uh, uh, depletes with age and time unless this is not harnessed Uh, this complete process uh, will not find even i have uh, heard uh, lockheed martin uh, ceo uh, reaching uh, U- us president that if america does not f- uh, focus on stem education the lockheed martin will not be able to maintain its edge in aerospace and defense so you can imagine uh, it's not only engineering knowledge but the stem knowledge is so important for this type of technology to prevail in any uh, any geographical boundary so uh, the other part uh, which we are doing is we are taking design project management this term we are fo- uh, uh, following because generally project management is uh, is a complete uh, discipline uh, but we have taken design project management as a uh, as a complete skill and a discipline and we are applying our generalized project management tools into design project design process and this is where we are Uh, ready to give our uh, input to the university level how this design uh, project management is uh, achievable using uh, while uh, doing uh, our within our universities and uh, uh, area industry so uh, this was uh, my um, said maybe if you like that i can uh, show you some uh, uh, small videos uh, it will be small uh, some of the products live please please absolutely uh, let me share it to you okay So meanwhile you're opening the presentation I would like to thank you for such a thought provoking presentation and for giving us an insight that individuals like you are working on uh, on their own levels individual capacities on the in the high tech sector in Pakistan so it was a new insight and thank you for for such a great presentation okay thank you this is one product which we did not discuss uh, uh, in the presentation this is automatic system totally designed and manufactured by a young talented engineers this system is dismantling uh, expired ammunition automatically with just click of a button Okay. Next week.
So is this the same device that you were showing us? Is this the same instrument? Same. Maybe it... you can go to the next video. Yeah. Now you'll see Kestabine trial. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you so you. much, sir. So uh, I would now you. request our panelist, Dr. Arshad Ali, to please take over uh, from now and uh, say over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Sareen Saab. Generally, what happens is that a uh, person reti after retirement uh, mm -hmm. just uh, uh, try to make a uh, uh, dua and uh, remain close to the masjid and prepare for the uh, last run uh, uh, while you must be doing that as well but you have taken the initiative uh, to have a startup and uh, uh, invest your own resources uh, we are extremely proud of uh, uh, this particular effort i'm sure while uh, being muslim we pray and uh, um, uh, prepare for our end at the same time such a service for the nation and the society is extremely important now i will invite uh, uh, president of pakistan aerospace council dr harun qureshi uh, he has comments as well as questions uh, so over to dr Har harun please Yes, thank, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rashid, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Sajid Tareen, sir. Oh, thank uh, you. Your presentation was most uh, encouraging, very encouraging, very your energy uh, in doing something uh, in advanced technologies for Pakistan is most appreciable and commendable. In fact, as uh, Dr. Rashid said, uh, most people retired from the armed forces. Um, you are one of, the, one of those who stand out. Uh, the, the, the knowledge and the experience that you have, you've applied it um, uh, to developing something on your own for Pakistan. I just have uh, a couple of questions. Um, 
आपने अपने आप को इतना ज्यादा आर एन डी में स्प्रेड किया है फ्रॉम माइक्रो टर्बाइन टू लॉन्चर फॉर स्मॉल यूएवीज और मीडियम साइज यूएवीज एंड टू अदर टेक्नोलॉजी अभी तक आई एम सर्टन के जो कुछ भी आप काम कर रहे हैं वो आपका सेल्फ फंडेड है या किसी ने इसको फंड uh, किया है माई फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन हाउ डू यू सी बिकमिंग सेल्फ सस्टेनेबल um have you made any money yet have you had any sales yet which can actually sustain you um second sustenance at times has to be uh, possibly done on a month to month basis uh, um, if if you have one sale in 3 uh, years and you have to pay salaries every month then your r&d and your energy may not be able to um, uh, kind of um, live up to the expectations of your um, लेडी वाइफ आप किचन ना चला तो वो आपकी सारी आर एन डी और सब कुछ बंद करवा देगी बिकॉज यू हैव नो मनी कमिंग इन सो यू आई आई एम श्योर यू हैव वर्क आउट प्लान कि सस्टेनेबल कैसे होगा हाउ विल एनी ऑफ दीज प्रोडक्ट हैव एस्टेनेबल कैश फ्लो नंबर टू अ कॉमेंट एंड एडवाइस इफ यू आर एक्सपेक्टिंग दैट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान और फॉर दैट मैटर एनी द गवर्नमेंट can actually support your venture then in my long experience this is a losing proposition if it is self sustainable aap khud usko sustain kar sakte hain without expecting any government to support you tab to ye bahut viable hai and inshallah your r&d and a lot of your work is going to go a long way but if you if you expecting that some government is going to come and support you so usme phir i'll be very surprised if that really happens एंड एट टाइम्स हमारी अपनी जो गवर्नमेंट की आर एंड डी फैसिलिटीज हैं या इस्टेब्लिशमेंट हैं वो आपसे टेक्नोलॉजी ऑफ ट्रांसफर टेक्नोलॉजी मांगेंगे इफेक्टिवली देर ट्राई एंड डुप्लीकेट यू वर्क एंड से कि अगर आप कर सकते हैं तो कोई कोई सरकारी इदारा क्यों नहीं कर सकता दैट्स माई थर्टी फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस दैट इफ इफ यू कैन डू इट वाई कांट एन अदर स्टेट इस्टेब्लिशमेंट डू इट इन सोन सपोर्ट तो लेट मी नॉट साउंड नेगेटिव आई एम सो वेरी प्राउड um of you and your spirit and your energy and most of all you being a pakistani ye yani and you know less than nobody um, else in the world in terms of what you're doing and your aspiration and your energy and um uh, before i give it back to you thank you very much um, um aia uh, sir, and pac uh, for to organizing you, sir, uh, basically sir so just to interrupt you because there is a power failure here. Uh, i lost contact अच्छा चले विल 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 कंटिन्यू उसके बाद करेंगे मैं सिर्फ आई वांट टू कमेंड एआईए एंड पीएसी फॉर होल्डिंग दिस वेबिनार एंड मस्ट अप्रिशिएट मुख्तावर फॉर मॉडरेटिंग इट सो वेल सो थैंक यू वेरी मच फ्रॉम माय साइड बैक टू डॉक्टर अर्शद अली जी साजे साहब योर कमेंट्स सर माय रिक्वेस्ट इज एट द मोमेंट देयर इज पावर फेलियर आई लॉस्ट द कांटेक्ट I would request Bakhtawar to can you repeat if there are questions by uh, Sir Harun. If you could repeat uh, these questions uh, by जी, Sir Harun. जी 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 मैं मैं आज कर रहा था कि आपकी spirit और आपकी जो energy है it's most commendable. Uh, अभी तक आपने जो कुछ भी किया है गालिबन ये uh, आपकी अपनी uh, resources से हुआ है. Uh, do you see a sustainable business model for uh, any of these products in the short run and in the long run? शॉर्ट रन ये है कि अगले छह महीने में अपने आप को कैसे अफोर्ड करेंगे इन द लॉन्ग रन क्या इसमें सस्टेनेबिलिटी है कि कुछ ऐसी प्रोडक्ट्स हैं जो कि अपने आप को बेचेंगे और आपका जो पूरा कैश फ्लो है उसको मैनेज करेंगे सो लॉट ऑफ एप्रिसिएशन फॉर यू एंड लॉट ऑफ गुड विशेज फ्रॉम बोथ फ्रॉम पी आई सी पी आई सी स्टैंड प्राउड टू हैव यू एज पार्ट एज आर वाइस प्रेजिडेंट फ्रॉम द साउथ रीजन and um, also to have you as a part of the pakistan um, high tech aerospace industry please go ahead sir uh, thank you sanjay sahab just one comment we have quite a good number of questions so kindly sir, be specific sir. and uh, i like uh, sir uh, sir harun's question regarding uh, how is going to be sustainable there is no doubt about the the potential of these products because they are very high valued products but it's just matter of time because uh, after uh, my uh, playing first inning i was coming as a uh, start as a startup for me it was very important to have some product in my hand i didn't want to be a trader frankly 
so what i decided i have to have my own hands must have something in my hand that is these r and d so r and d is now my i have my own five patented products <laughs> which now i'm going to say I think there is an internet issue at the moment. Uh, Dr. Arshad, if you would like to take any comments from any of the panelists over here, let me contact Sajid sir if the connection works fine for him. Uh, yes, if you can take him on telephone and then uh, he can uh, then maybe convey on telephone. Join us. Oh, he's back. He's back. Okay. Sanjay Sab, are you back? Sanjay Sab. So please unmute your mic. Mic off. Sanjay, your mic off. Hello. Sanjay Sab, ah, mic off. Hai Ah, you are back. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, so this was actually basic requirement for me to have some product in my hand. So thus, in uh, last four years, I have done a lot of effort to get these products, my uh, my own product. Now I am the OEM of these products. So this is the added advantage I have, for sure. In next uh, six months or maybe one year, this is going to be my marketing year. Like this webinar is one uh, attempt to have this. Uh, marketing now because we have developed these technologies and now we are we are fairly con confident to have this to make an impact uh, even in international uh, markets like i said we have participated in ideas we have participated in idex uh, abu dhabi twice uh, and uh, just to uh, we have few companies few, uh, few government companies uh, international government companies uh, are with us to collaborate with us we are working with some uh, uh, asean countries uh, com uh, country companies who are working with us to take uh, advantage from our know-how. So we are already into this market. And we have, the good part is that we have good five or six Pakistani products in our hand. And we are the proud OEMs of these products. Uh, thank you very much. We have with us uh, uh, Paran Hafiz. Uh, uh, I remember he used to work for Pratt & Whitney. <laughs> In Canada, I don't know still uh, is with them or not. So, uh, Farhan, over to you, please. Uh, thank you, Arshad. Uh, as you have uh, rightly pointed out, yes, I still work with Pratt and Whitney Canada. Um, my experience is uh, development uh, for uh, turbofan engines, and now I'm doing project management. So, mm -hmm. with that behind me. I would like to have a few questions. Uh, the questions are a bit leading questions. They are small, uh, but I would like to get to uh, some information because I'm a little confused because the title of the presentation was micro turbines, but we talked about so many things. Uh, so starting with uh, the thing you mentioned that these are eco-friendly engines. So uh, uh, how are these eco-friendly? I mean, you talked about power generation. How do you extract power from these engines? Yes. That's question number one. And then I'll follow with yes. more. Okay. Can you please go ahead and answer your question okay. so that okay. they are answered? Uh, uh, Replying for the first question. Paran, can answer, you have. You... Hello. Okay, uh, Sajid Sahib, you I can. Uh, you are audible. Can you uh, respond to the first question? Sajid Sahib, you are audible. Can you respond to the first question, please? Yes, I can respond to the question. Okay. Uh, like, uh, you know, in, uh, as I told you, your, uh, some more countries, they have conducted a study in the last six years, in, say, 2014 and 2016. They have a project by European Union for 1.6 million euros to make uh, power turbines from these gas turbines, right? So uh, we started this uh, research study and all that. We, in a very limited period of time, um, we were able to manage a gas turbine is in, in the propulsion mode. But just for the uh, information of the audience, that uh, we are 
alhamdulillah uh, joining with some uh, uk is based company those who are going to work with us to convert these turbines into power turbines by uh, next uh, june hopefully and we for this process we are actually uh, again uh, the, one of the very purpose of this webinar was that we are coming to the government now that we need funding for these projects now so we have managed to develop gas turbine parts now in the next eight nine months we are going to work on the design to convert these same products into uh, power turbines electrical power turbines so that so, so one agreement we have done with the uk based uh, university and and the company those who are ready to work with us and to develop and product, market this product uh, in uh, asian countries even in uk uh, and in european union so this is one uh, one of part of uh, one part of your answer which you've asked so we are going to make it like this so uh, the, the at the moment what you are seeing is the turbines in propulsion mode okay thank you uh, the other question is that these micro turbines uh, were originally Sir? from what they gather I hope that answers I hope that answers uh, yes uh, it does thank you um, so the second question i have is that you mentioned that uh, these are I cannot uh, hear you. can you hear me can, can you please repeat yes i said you, during the presentation you mentioned that these are eco friendly engines uh, based on my past experience of 18 years working in the uh, engine development design um, as the engines become smaller and smaller their efficiencies become less and less larger the engine is the more efficient it is uh, micro turbines as you had rightly pointed out during the presentation run at around 100 1000 plus rpm at those speeds the efficiencies go out of the window so how are you how are you claiming that these are efficient engines because running at high speed high temperatures the efficiencies are extremely extremely impossible to manage you're right okay. yes you're right uh, uh, the, uh, in this mo uh, mode you'll find uh, efficiencies in the range of 50 16 percent however but uh, some innovative uh, methods we uh, are targeting this uh, micro gas turbine for a special purpose for renewable energy integration with re renewable energy. So for that, for that, the target is for electrical power around 24 or 30 percent efficiency using recuperators. And uh, for to make it efficient for uh, CSP mode for thermal, this uh, can go up to 70 to 80 percent. Of course, it's an evolution process. Okay, uh, so to make them uh, turbine efficient for CSP mode, for, uh, for can be so that it can be used with uh, renewable energy grids, uh, with uh, fuel cell or uh, wind turbines and these turbines will be used as uh, as a backup turbines to sustain that. Uh, uh, irregular supply of electricity. So these turbines have proven good uh, in the recent uh, studies has shown. And Alhamdulillah, we are following this pattern. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Even if we uh, have managed to get 25-30% uh, 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 this with recuperators, so this is because, uh, as you said, uh, they have gas turbines uh, in this range are 15% uh, efficient, but uh, Making it 25-30 percent is going to be target. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, actually, efficiency has a lot to do with the kind of applications we are dealing with, and uh, uh, generally, people sitting in the west start comparing uh, the work with the latest uh, uh, technologies and the companies. Uh, but uh, uh, in the developing part of the world, uh, whatsoever. Uh, uh, innovation, uh, uh, supplementary innovation we do, I think uh, that is a big step uh, with kind of limitations uh, uh, we have uh, in uh, our uh, ecosystem. Uh, so uh, that is very, very important to keep in mind. So uh, we have Dr. Sara Qureshi with us. Uh, she's doing excellent work. Uh, Sara, would you uh, like to have some comments or question, please?
Okay, uh, I'm not turning on the video because it just uh, because we don't have a very strong connection. Um, I have I have a lot of questions and uh, it's a great work that you are doing. Congratulations. And um, uh, my first question is about, uh, you know, the you're, you're doing some parts in house. So I would like to know uh, about your um, experience with um, Inconel and um, whether you have any uh, experience with its casting or machining. And then my second question is uh, about your access to uh, bearings, as you mentioned that you are um, going up to 120,000 RPM. So, uh, you know, uh, where are you getting those uh, bearings for high speeds? And uh, the third question is that, is this uh, R&D, just R&D, or are you also in production or uh, the number of, have you developed a single prototype or you have some uh, some number of uh, prototypes available and also the percentage of uh, the percentage of uh, components that you are manufacturing or developing in house uh, and maybe sub modules that you are doing in house uh, i mean these and I, I would obviously prefer that we have a live uh, um, you know presentation as well uh, it's it's a bit disturbed on Zoom, but anyways, if you could answer my questions. And Dr. Dr. Sarah, thank, thank you very much. much. And Dr. Sarah, thank you very much for your question, but, but unfortunately, unfortunately now, communication now communication is actually, is actually getting problematic, problematic now. now. Uh, uh, question, question I could... I could uh, 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 from, from the, the uh, word you said, Inconel. From Inconel, you were interested. How, what is our experience on Inconel? Yes. And uh, regarding bearing technology, then. Uh, to start with, Inconel is a very good experience. Inconel. We are doing on Inconel. And uh, rest other technologies. We have uh, using uh, hybrid bearings. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, we are going uh, with hybrid bearing, hybrid bearing. Okay. And then uh, we have uh, other option with air bearings <coughs> and magnetic bearings. So uh, somehow we are able to manage this. And regarding your question about how many uh, products or prototypes we developed? At the moment, we have we have developed a four version of the engine. Two did not work well. However, remaining, uh, I said, 120 newton and 180 newton, they are functioning well, and we are uh, uh, testing on the ground. And hopefully, uh, by end of this year, we are targeting to make it flyworthy. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Can we have a uh, question yeah. and comment from Dikram, please? Um, um, uh, my uh, co-founder, the CTO of the company, uh, Mr. Masood Quresh, is also here with me. He would ask, uh, would like to ask a question if it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Masood Saab uh, is a very senior uh, person retired from Atomic Energy Commission, and uh, once I had the opportunity to visit, uh, I was extremely impressed to see the work he is doing. Ji, Masood Sahib. Uh, <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum. Uh, okay, uh, I just had, um, uh, I won't take too much time. I just had a few questions. Now, uh, the word micro turbine, I probably missed out because I just joined the conversation. <clears throat> so, um, at what stage would you call a turbine a micro turbine? Uh, that is important. Yes. Um, Secondly, is uh, if you are, uh, what is the size? And I, I assume if you are running it at 120,000 RPM, uh, the diameter uh, in uh, the tip uh, tip velocity would be 
uh, would have to remain uh, subsonic. So uh, uh, from uh, you know combining these two questions, uh, I would like to know where where, where you call a uh, micro turbine. Thank you, sir, for your question. Uh, sir, uh, Historically, started uh, to call one kilowatt to another, but it, this idea did not last long. And uh, until recently, the last study conducted by European Union, they have taken uh, micro gas turbines having power 400 kilowatt and one kilowatt would be graded as a micro gas turbine. Sir? Okay, sir. Uh, what so, would be the uh, diameter of uh, the, the impeller or, uh, or or its largest uh, rotating element? Uh, Seventy mm is the bind. Hundred and eighty newton. Okay. Sir, sir, can you hear me? Hmm. Hmm. Sir, sir, I have finished my answer. Is it audible now? So your voice is not clear. Can you please read the question again? Okay, I can. Uh, the question was question was regarding uh, that what at what uh, is the power requirement for a micro gas turbine to be called a micro gas turbine to be yeah. called a micro gas turbine? <clears throat> and the other question was what is the diameter of our gas turbine engine? So uh, I said we are using two types of. Uh, at the moment, the product we have made is 120 newton and 180 newton. For 180 newton, the diameter is 70 mm. And the weight of complete engine is 1.5 kg. OK, can we have a question and comment mm -hmm. from Asad Ikram, please? Asad, are you available? If Asad is not available, can we have a question from Manzar Alam? Uh, you also put up one question. Can you please uh, uh, repeat your question? Manzar Alam. Thank you, Arshad. Uh, my question is uh, regarding the uh, disarmament of weapon. What is the rate of disarmament and how safe it is? Disarmament? Disarming of weapon. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Sajid sir, if you can uh, turn off your camera as well so that your uh, voice is clear. Mm -hmm. Sajid sir, can you, can you hear us? I, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, if you can turn off your video so that uh, your voice quality will be much better then. Hello, Sareen Saab. Sir, sir I can, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, can we can hear you. Okay. Sir, uh, for this machine, uh, we are using 600 rounds per hour. Uh, so disarmament speed, and how safe it is? It's very safe. 
Okay, uh, I think we uh, uh, the kind of uh, resilience uh, Sajitreen has uh, uh, making a presentation in these times uh, in from Karachi is itself a, a, a very big uh, task uh, because everywhere there are uh, electrical outages and uh, so many problems. So we are extremely uh, proud of you and appreciate your efforts. Uh, over to Bakhtawar uh, for the closing remarks. So first of all, thank you to all the panelists and the audience available. Thank you for taking out time. And uh, thank you, Sajasa, for an excellent presentation that it was thought provoking and it was actually a very inspirational one. So um, signing off with this, and I would request all the participants who are available at this point to please like the official platforms of all the social media platforms available for the Pakistan Aerospace Council and AIIA. Uh, all the recording link will be shared in the in the chat comment as well. And uh, thank you all for your presence. Have a good day. I request the question answer in the forum. If it could be answered. Sure. Uh, sir, uh, I would request. Uh, 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 excuse me. Uh, um, can, I, we, can, I just, uh, can I just step in, please, if you don't mind? Uh, we will put these questions. This presentation will be available online from Pakistan Aerospace Council website, and uh, the questions will also be answered uh, along with the uh, uh, video over there. Over to Bakhtawar. All right. We will request Sajid Sab to please answer all these questions that we have in the comment box, and uh, hopefully he will try to answer all uh, the maximum questions. So thank you all for your time. And uh, soon, inshallah, we're going to come up with another exciting seminar and a presentation like this. Uh, we would be wanting your feedback as well. So please uh, do like all the platforms and share your comments and suggestions as well. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you very much.